Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update the 12th of April, and I've got a studio back again. So no more sitting on the floor, um, trying to record off of a laptop. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, I just did one, I'm getting back into the flow a little bit. But this is a critical thing that everyone needs to be considering, the retirement of the old Azure Service Manager, but therefore also the roles that were associated with the Azure Service Manager. So I go through the removal of those classic roles and some of the steps you need to perform uh, to make sure you're healthy and are not going to hit any problems. On to what's new on the compute side. So Azure Backup now supports private endpoint enabled disks in preview. So if I'm using a private endpoint for the communication to the managed disk from my virtual machine, I can now protect this with Azure Backup. And this is going to work for both the standard and the enhanced backup policies. And also when I perform a restore, I'll be able to pick, well, do I want to use just regular networking or retain that restricted networking using the private endpoint? App Service now has multi-plan subnet join in preview. So ordinarily, if I want to do a virtual network integration from an App Service plan, each App Service plan requires its own subnet. Now, if I have lots of different App Service plans, that means a lot of different subnets. Depending on how efficient I am with sizing those subnets, I have IP waste. But then also I'm managing a lot of different network security groups, maybe user-defined routes. It's just a lot of overhead. So what this feature lets me do is, as the name suggests, I can have multiple app service plans share a single subnet. So that will simplify that management. Now, I still have to consider the IP size of that subnet because I've still got the various IP requirements for the app service plan, but it does now let me consolidate those down. And this will work for all of the SKUs that support VNet integration. And then Azure Red Hat OpenShift had some updates. Remember, this is the sort of partner solution between Azure and Red Hat to provide a managed offering around this. So they added Terraform provider support for the Azure Red Hat. You can bring your own network security groups. There are now Azure Monitor signals emitted that I can both view and alert on. There are some new GPU instance types and the Taiwan region is available. On the database side, so Azure Stream Analytics can now output directly to Delta Lake. So Delta Lake is a popular format from lake houses. It adds reliability, performance within your data lake. And what this output enables me to now do is from Azure Stream Analytics, I can output directly to a Delta Lake table via that connector. I don't have to do any other ETL or other type uh, processes. MySQL Flexible now has Defender for Cloud in GA. Remember, Defender for Cloud is available for lots of different solutions and resource types that offers protection, uh, alerting, remediation guidance specific to that type of resource. So now with the MySQL Flexible, it provides details of the suspicious activity, what is the associated MITRE attack tactic, recommendations for actions, recommendations for the investigations. Uh, it's also available for Postgres, Flexible, MariaDB as well, when you think about the other open source relational databases. MySQL Flexible now has long-term retention in preview. So this is now through Azure Backup Integration offering up to 10 years of retention, which is way more than I think it's the default 35 days I would normally get. PostgreSQL Flexible Private Link has gone GA. So if I want to have that private endpoint in my virtual network that talks specifically to a particular instance of the PostgreSQL Flexible, that is now generally available. Avoids having to have any public endpoint uh, exposed and just focus on that private connectivity. Azure Managed Apache Cassandra now has VPN support in GA. So this can help alleviate those data exfiltration concerns. Now, all of the egress that has to go to other endpoints, for example, I have other Azure services, can now go through this single endpoint that I can govern. Behind the scenes is using private link. 
but now I can have that single endpoint through all of the external communications will flow, so I can have a, a tighter control on that. And then SQL Server on Linux now supports Azure Key Vault. So what this is doing is it's the using the extensible key management feature that enables me to manage the encryption keys. And through the SQL Server connector for Azure Key Vault, now lets me use Azure Key Vault for the storage of those encryption keys. So then I get all the goodness of Azure Key Vault related to the key storage, the key management, the rotation, etc. I can bring all of that centralized to Azure Key Vault. And that's available for SQL Server 2022 CU2, uh, 12, CU12 and above. And then Azure SQL Database Elastic Jobs have gone GA. We talked about Elastic Jobs previously when it was in preview, but this gives me the ability to automate, schedule and execute various T-SQL jobs. I can trigger it through the portal, PowerShell, API, T-SQL APIs. And the key part of what I can do here is I'm gonna create a target group. Now that target group can contain databases across different servers, different regions, even different subscriptions, and enable me to run that as a particular job step and target all of those. So I get great scale, I get parallel execution, so I get great performance. I might use it, for example, to rebuild indexes, to update schemas, to run a collection of queries that I wanna capture the data for, maybe do data movement, a whole bunch of other things. And these jobs can contain multiple steps. And remember, each job step can target a particular group uh, of my databases. If there's failures, it will automatically retry. And obviously, it's consumption-based. I'll pay for the work it's actually doing. And then miscellaneous. So Azure Load Testing is now available in the US Gov Virginia region. Remember, Azure Load Testing provides that managed service to run those Apache JMeter scripts but also there were a lot of integrations with other solutions. So I don't have to write that JMeter script. I can just say, hey, hey, I want these types of requests made at this volume, uh, go and do that for me. So it's a great way to load test my applications. And talking of that, so Azure Load Testing is now available from Azure App Service Portal. So if I go to the load testing, I think there's preview right now in the navigation menu in your app service, uh, and I'll see that under the performance category, I can now go and trigger an Azure load test. I don't have to create that JMeter script as I was just talking about. I can just tell it, hey, I want these request parameters. This is my load configuration, go. And it will then give me the client and the server side metrics associated with that Azure load test. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.